Mick Mulvaney is the guy who Trump wants to be the head of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And he wants him in that position uh, for one reason. He doesn't believe in the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. He doesn't think it should exist. That's not me putting words in his mouth. That's him. He said repeatedly, the, the organization, the agency is a joke. It's comical. It's overreach of the government trying to control your life. Um, well, Ken Klippenstein, reporting for TYT, did a great job figuring out why it is that Mick Mulvaney despises uh, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau so much. And he found some interesting stuff. So uh, Mick Mulvaney, he used to be a congressman. And from 2009 through 2016, let me tell you some of his fundraising. From Bank of America, he took $20,951. Remember, for a congressman, this is a lot of money. For a congressman, I mean, we're t this isn't the Senate. Senate, they're even bigger sellouts. Congress, they sell out, not as much as the Senate. But that's a lot of money now, isn't it? Uh, the, the American Bankers Association, always looking out for the little guy that group is, he took $32,500. The Credit Union Association, $30,250. J.P. Morgan Chase and the Mortgage Bankers Association... Uh, and the Mortgage Bankers Association, $9,200 and $9,000, respectively, he took. From the CEO of First Financial Bank USA, this guy maxed to him in an individual contribution, $2,600. Uh, Grupo Salinas, which owns the largest payday loan chain in the country, Advance America, contributed $5,000 to Mulvaney, so he's taken out of Debbie Wasserman Schultz playbook there of let's do the bidding of the predatory payday lenders you know interest rates of over 200 percent totally yeah so j just so you know so these aren't people who have a genuine philosophical disagreement and they think you know i think not regulating the economy is a better a better approach i think that makes everything work better no these guys have a vested financial interest in denying the fact, fact, that um, things work better when you do regulate. So even though you can show him all the evidence in the world, and he'll be like, nope, I think deregulation is a better way to go. Well, why do you think that? Maybe because you're fucking paid to think that. So, uh, you know, we've gone over this a thousand times before, but the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, over $11 billion has been returned to defrauded Americans. So financial institutions fuck over Americans in a variety of ways. The only cop there to make sure that, uh, you know, we can find a way to redress those grievances is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And what they want to do is handcuff it and make it irrelevant. The best part of Dodd-Frank after the subprime mortgage crisis and the Great Recession is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. The entire Republican plan is to get rid of it, but it, instead of getting, getting rid of it on paper, because then everybody goes, whoa, that's fucking extreme. Just pick somebody to be the head of it who doesn't believe in it and will sit idly by. It's the same Republican trick for all the other government agencies. Look at Scott Pruitt with the EPA. He sued the EPA over a dozen times. Now, you expect him to efficiently use the EPA to stop the abuses of big business and stop pollution and, and uh, stop us from going further down the road of climate change? There's no way he's going to do that. So this is where we are. By the way, again, I, I feel like I make this point far too often, but I'm the only one making it, so maybe it's not too often. These are the real scandals in America. This is a scandal, but the corporate media doesn't cover it because it requires connecting the dots and also undermining the entire way the system works. If you're CNN and you cover this, what you're doing is you're saying, hey, maybe it's all bullshit. You know, hey, maybe, look, I'm just saying, maybe they're all uh, screwing you over. And maybe the way somebody rises through the ranks of power in the U.S., maybe it's all bullshit. Maybe the people who are the biggest sellouts are the ones who work their way up that ladder. And that's the reality. So they never cover it in this way because then they're kind of unmasking the system and letting you know, hey, we're talking about a thousand side scandals here. 
But the real scandal is the American political system, which rewards the biggest sellouts to Wall Street, to big pharma, to for private health insurance for profit health insurance companies, private health insurance companies, to the military industrial complex. You know, that's a stark realization now, isn't it? When you go, wow, look at that. In order to get these high positions of power and authority, you need to be beholden to those corporate interests. So CNN would never cover that because then they go, the politicians don't care about you. And they wouldn't put it in, in those black and white terms. They wouldn't be straightforward because they're also elites and they're also part of the establishment. So they're buddy-buddy with the way this system works.